Welcome back, everyone, and welcome back to a new episode of Corvette Ed's Garage. So what the hell is a blow-off valve? Well, in this episode, we're going to cover the blow-off valve. What is a blow-off valve? What its purpose is? And do I need one if I run a supercharger? Now, you're going to need to pay attention because there's a lot of information I'm covering, and I, I worked up this chart uh, just to show you the basic functions of the blow-off valve. And by the end of the video, you should know what the blow-off valve is and what its function is for. And don't forget to watch to the end because I got some new candy in and I can't wait to show you. So with that being said, let's do it. Let's go! So the ProFlow, a uh, blow-off valve. Well, what is a blow-off valve? Well, basically what the blow-off valve does, it protects the supercharger. When you let off your throttle, it closes the throttle blade. So when that happens, you end up building up pressure, and that's not good for the supercharger. So think of it this way. Say you're running, and you run smack right into a wall. And when you hit that wall, you're stopped. And so now with the throttle blades closed, it's going to build up pressure. Well, you got to be able to relieve that pressure somehow. So that's why the uh, blow-off valve was was created. It will allow that pressure to bleed off the, through the blow-off valve rather than back up into the supercharger. So that's pretty much what happens to the air when the throttle blades close. You still got pressure coming from the supercharger going into the tubes, but nowhere to go. So it kind of backflows, and when that happens, that flow is working against the supercharger. So now it wants to push back into the supercharger, which is going to slow them blades down. It's going to be hard on the bearings and whatnot. So you got to have an outlet, uh, a pressure release outlet, because basically it is uh, building up pressure, uh, and that's not good either. So the excess air that's not going back to the supercharger, now it's uh, pushing against the tubes and the intercooler. And, it, and, and if you think about it, it actually expands at a certain point. It's not going to affect the intercooler, nor is it going to affect the intercooler piping, because that's made out of aluminum. However, you do have hoses making connections to the intercooler piping, and Pro Charger have some really quality hoses, but they're uglier than sin. Like on the top of the supercharger, I use a silicon hose, and that's a very soft hose. So the backflow will actually expand that one particular hose. I'm not worried about the uh, hoses that uh, Pro Charger uh, supplies the kit with. Now the way the blow-off valve works, there's actual boost vacuum coming from the intake manifold going over to the blow-off valve, and when it receives vacuum, then it will close the throttle plate that's inside the blow-off valve and that will allow the supercharger to blow 100 percent of the air into the intake so when there's no boost vacuum the blow-off valve will default back to uh, the throttle blades being wide open so think of it this way when the throttle body throttle plates are open the blow-off valve is actually closed because the supercharger is pushing air into the throttle body going into the intake manifold so when the throttle body blades are closed the blow-off valve is actually open which is allowing the back pressure to bleed through the surge valve so that's about as simple as I can put it so now the hose that the surge valve is connected to where is that coming from well actually it's coming from one of the inner tubing uh, tubes that's routed up to the surge valve so you got constant air coming out of it you know isn't that loud yeah it is loud but if you put a can and filter on the other end uh, you'd be surprised how quiet it becomes so now that we test fitted everything and the uh, now that we installed the coolant reservoir and the surge valve hose is now secure with a clamp uh, it's time to go ahead and put that surge valve in a little tight in that area uh, it's, it's, it's out of my control uh, if I cut more of that hose it's gonna run into that harness that runs above that uh, surge valve hose and that's going to interfere with the actuator that's going up and down and we don't want to do any we don't want that uh, to be interfered with that that could that could be ugly well, uh, this is where it's going to end up staying if uh, I end up coming up with another idea. I don't know. I'm still working on that. Now here, I'm mocking everything up. You know, I want to make sure that uh, 
uh, this is where I want to route it, um, hook in the vacuum line, uh, the <clears throat> uh, coolant reservoir, and you can see there's not really much space in there to deal with. Uh, however, uh, once this is all taken care of, I'll go ahead and mount it permanently. Now the hose that I use, is a thick ass hose and it's probably overkill, but you know the length of that the hose is so long, I, I, I decided I'm just going to get me something. I, I don't want any lag. Uh, vacuum lag when it comes to activating that surge valve so that's the reason why I got the uh, hose that I did. So we're just going to route that uh, around the fender well and then uh, all right by the fuel management unit running alongside the uh, firewall and then work my way over to the intake as you can see here. So this line right here that's actually the original um, vacuum line that goes into this port. Now I did tee that one off for the bypass valve. Now the one that you can't see is the line for the fuel management unit. Now this right here is this 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 hose is going into my uh, fuel pressure regulator, my adjustable fuel pressure regulator. But that is actually also teed off for the FMU. Now this one right here, that is I'm saving for the uh, MSD vacuum line. So that pretty much covers all the bases as far as vacuum line is concerned. Now, all these components all did say that I can tee off in the vacuum line. However, I, I didn't want to share the same vacuum, vacuum line for each component. So I'm lucky in a sense that I have three available vacuum lines that I'm teeing off of. Uh, and if I didn't, then I would actually tap in into the intake and create one or two extra ports. Well, now it's time to um, go ahead and install the intercooler cover. Um, this piece that I'm going to be attaching here, it kind of fills in the air gap. Uh, and you'll see when I uh, put the um, uh, cover on why that piece is important. And this is goes to show you that being the Pro Charger, they really did their homework when they did this kit, man. Uh, it's just the, the the parts that were supplied from Pro Charger. It's just the uniqueness of the the kit and how it pertains to this specific car is outstanding. Uh, I mean, I ended up having to buy the bottom uh, air dam cover because I damaged the original one that came with the kit. And guess what? Pro Charger had it in stock. And we're talking about a car that's uh, 1985, almost what 40 years old. That's unheard of in today's world. And this, this is a good company. I can't say anything bad about Pro Charger. Anyway, as you can see, there's no issues in uh, uh, placing the cover over the uh, uh, intercooler. You notice the four holes on the intercooler cover matches the four holes on the housing. Yeah, I know I'm only using three boats to in this demonstration. I dropped the goddamn boat underneath the car and found it two days later. Anyway, Pro Charger made this real easy for me. This kit is about as close as you can get to a real bolt-on kit. Yeah, there's other kits out there there's like Vortex and a few other names, uh, good brands out there. But uh, I did the research and all my research led me to Pro Charger. Alright Pro Charger, get the hell out of here. You're stealing my show. Anyway. Uh, now that we got the cover on, this cover ain't going to come off anytime soon. Uh, and I'm real grateful for that. Thank God. I don't know how many times I pull that goddamn thing off and on. Well, there you go, guys. I mean, that was a little bit involved in how the blow-off valve works. Now, as far as the installation is concerned, that was a piece of cake. And I'll tell you something that wasn't a piece of cake. It's my last video. Uh, if you haven't seen that video, go ahead and click on this card up here and it'll take you right to it. That turned out to be such a nightmare, clusterfuck, all the above. So join me in my struggles and frustration as I try to get the Corvette started for the first time with that supercharger on. That wasn't fun. Anyway, as promised, I'm excited to show you some candy I just received. So here's what I got. So it looks like we just got everything in uh, to finish up this uh, supercharger project. This is our sensor for our wideband gauge. Of course, the wideband harness and the wideband gauge itself. And of course, we have the boost uh, fuel pressure gauge. It's all in one, di one dial there. And then something that we've been waiting for in this puppy right here. Man, I didn't even realize how heavy this bitch was, but it was pretty heavy. 
<laughs> yeah. This thing is a beast. Uh, 6 BTM, that is uh, BTM stands for Boost Timing Master. This will retard the timing as we go into boost and it's very critical that you do that, otherwise you can have a catastrophic failure. But we got one last thing left and that is the gauge pod. I'm waiting for that and then I can go ahead and start uh, installing the gauges and the uh, BTM. I wasn't lying about that MSD. That some bitch is freaking heavy. It's got to be almost 10 pounds. Well, I mean, I'm a little exaggerating on that, but it's heavy. Serious piece of equipment. It was not cheap either. You won't believe what the cost was. If you're willing to pay $750. Damn! This is what it cost me out the door. You got uh, some serious piece of equipment there. But with that being said, my surgeon just gave me the green light. I'm off restriction, back to full duty. Well, I'm retired, so same difference. I can get back on my Corvette, and I'm looking forward to that. With that said, thank you for watching the video. I hope you learned something. I know I did. Don't forget to subscribe, like, comment, all the above. You know what to do. Uh, stay tuned for some new videos coming out here. I got a couple more that uh, I'm uh, editing at the moment and focus basically on getting the MSD in, uh, the boost gauge, the wideband, uh, and get ready for some serious tuning. You know, some, some old school tuning, so you want to stay tuned for something like this. Because uh, it's staying I ain't got no computer hooking up to this car. It's 1985, almost 40 years old, so that's out the door. Until then, guys, thank you for watching. And we'll see you on another episode of Corvette Ed's Garage. Yeah, I'ma do shit my way. So you can go kick rocks. I'ma stack bricks up, build what I want to make. Yo, I got a lot of shit to say, so I'ma do this every day. I'll be writing things until I'm fucking buried in my grave. Six feet deep, wonder, but my body won't decay. Cause my messages are timeless, so they'll put them on display. Oh yeah, I rap with a certainty. I have a sense of urgency, a message for eternity. For everyone internally, I had some people burning me, but now they fucking learn to see I